Are you talking, uh, sorry, on, on what, what subject? Are we talking now drugs or, or crime? I'm talking, I'm talking safe supplies. Uh, well, again, you know, how can you possibly report on the story when you're already using government propaganda? It's not safe. Yes, that's the problem. You're using the term they're using. How can you? Thank you very much for coming, everyone. I'd like to start by offering my condolences to the family and loved ones of Brianna Broadfoot, uh, who, a 17 year old, beautiful girl from London, killed by someone who had already been arrested, but for reasons I don't understand, was released to carry out domestic violence on her again. She is just the latest victim of the radical NDP wacko catch and release justice system, or I should say injustice system. It allows the same repeat violent offenders to go free again and again. Justin Trudeau and the NDP told you all that it would work, that all the so-called experts agreed that freeing criminals onto the street 50, 60, 70 times within hours of their latest arrest would somehow make us all safer. Most Canadians thought it was wacko, and they were right. Today, the data is out from Stats Canada. Data released moments ago show that violent crime has been uh, is up 50% after nine years of Trudeau and the NDP Liberals. Homicides up 28%. Sexual assaults, 75% higher. Violent firearm offenses, up 116%, more than double. Extortion, up 357%. As small business owners get letters telling them that if they don't pay a million dollars, there'll be a bullet flying through their six-year-old uh, daughter or son's bedroom window in the middle of the night. That's what's happening on our streets. Auto theft, up 46%. This is the direct result of NDP liberal catch and release policies that turn the same repeat offenders loose on our streets again and again and again. Just last week, we saw a story of 18 offenders charged, charged with 150 crimes. Nine of them were already out on some sort of early release. And since their, their arrest, six of them have been released again. And what do you know? They're out doing more and more crime. A very tiny group of criminals doing all the crime. Even the justice minister has had his car stolen three times. Incredible. You'd think the criminals would be somewhat grateful that he keeps releasing them. But no, they steal his car too. And he, he is too dense to figure out that, that they should be locked up. This is the same guy who said that crime wasn't rising. It was just a perception. He said that Canadians were just believing crazy conspiracy theories about crime and that the smart people who stare at screens and look at spreadsheets knew better. Well, now the spreadsheets are out and they confirm that catch and release, wacko NDP liberal policies have caused one of the worst crime waves in Canadian history. Look at the firearms issue. Remember they told us if they banned hunters and sport shooters who have li who are licensed law abiding trained and tested that those people would that all of a sudden we wouldn't have gun crime well here we are more crime why it turns out that hunters are not the problem nor are our licensed sport shooters they've already been trained and tested they've had all of their backgrounds checked and they're daily checked on the police database system right those people don't commit crime I want to protect Canadians from criminals, while Trudeau and the NDP want to protect turkeys from hunters. You decide which makes more sense to you. We see the chaos here in London with tent cities popping up everywhere. Now, this is obviously partly the result of the NDP Liberals doubling your housing costs, but also they're giving out drugs, taxpayer-funded opioids that are ending up in the hands of kids despite the lies of those who are in the in the system who are profiting from it are making this the, the drug problem even worse and now we learn that the end that the ndp liberal government had a secret document planning national decriminalization 
They tried to keep it under wraps until after the next election, hoping Canadians would not find out. But Blacklock's reporter got their hands on the document, and it showed a secret scheme to legalize crack, heroin, cocaine, and other hard drugs, which, if Trudeau and the NDP are re-elected, will be as easy to get in your neighborhood as a candy bar at a corner store. This is uh, reality, my friends. After nine years of Trudeau and the NDP Liberals, everything is broken. Canadians are broke. And NDP Liberals are not worth the crime, chaos, cost, and corruption. Speaking of costs, we see that our economy is collapsing. The Bank of Canada is forced to try and come to the rescue as the bank governor sees our economy shrinking faster than any other G7 country. We have the worst economy in the OECD. People, we're hemorrhaging jobs, all while inflation is once again rising. Trudeau and the NDP have doubled our national debt, and now they plan to quadruple the carbon tax, hiking the cost of gas 61 cents a litre, which will raise the cost of food, of heat, of gas, of everything that Canadians buy. This is a radical, wacko scheme that Canadians cannot afford, and we are seeing it metastasize onto our streets everywhere. Fortunately, common sense conservatives will bring home the country we knew and still love. We will ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. We'll ax the carbon tax to bring down gas, heat, and grocery bills. We will build the homes by requiring municipalities, speed up permits, free up land, and cut development taxes to build 15% more homes per year as a condition of getting federal funds. We'll cap spending and cut waste to, to fix the budget and bring down interest rates and inflation, and we will stop the crime. With jail, not bail, for repeat violent offenders who will no longer be eligible for bail, house arrest, probation, or uh, parole. We will secure our borders with high-powered scanners that will ensure that shipping containers can no longer bring drugs and guns in and stolen cars out. And we will honor our law-abiding, licensed, trained and tested firearms owners by protecting their ability to use their property instead of spending seven billion dollars to go hunt them down and take away what they have been using lawfully and legally. And finally, we will combat the drug crisis that Trudeau has unleashed. We, we will do away with taxpayer-funded hydromorphone and other hard drugs that, that the, the industry of active money-sucking activists, tr drug companies, uh, bureaucrats, and hacktiv uh, hackademics, we will cut that back. There will be no more money for any of them. All the money is going to go into treatment and recovery services, detox, counseling, group therapy, sweat lodges for First Nations, physical exercise, job placement, transitional housing. This is how we're going to bring our loved ones home drug-free. What I'm talking about, my friends, is common sense, the common sense of the common people united for our common home. Now let's bring it home. Uh, Adam Zevo from the National Post has given, uh, has done intrepid reporting on this where he's shown that the cost of a hydromorphin tablet has dropped uh, on the street has dropped by like 95 percent because as soon as the addicts get the drugs they resell it so they can buy something more potent uh, and uh, it has been uh, handed off to kids. Uh, so uh, look at the, look at what uh, the public health activists and even one of your, there's one uh, uh, do, so-called doctor here in town who uh, was caught on tape admitting that there's diversion of those drugs. So uh, the, dev the evidence is in and it's final and uh, you know I would also encourage the media to be more responsible. Uh, I, it is just so irresponsible for you to go and quote people who profit from the ongoing drug crisis as though they are experts. They are not experts. If they were experts, their policies, which have been implemented 
over the last nine years would not have caused 40,000 deaths, would not have seen an over 100% increase in op opioid overdoses. They, the last thing they want is for the crisis to end because they're, do they're making so much money off of it. Uh, we've got to stop feeding the activist class and start providing treatment and recovery. I would encourage you, if you're going to be, if you're going to cover this drug issue, stop talking to the people who caused the problem. Start talking to the recovery centers. I would ask, why don't you ask the people, when you, when you interview them, why don't you ask them, how many people have you got off drugs? Call them up, the local public authority, public health authorities, ask them how many people they've gotten off of drugs. Because it's, it's interesting, the media in, rewards these people for the carnage that they're causing. They call, you call them experts. They're not experts. They're expert only at one thing, and that is perpetuating the drug crisis. Their policies have been implemented for the last nine years, and we see the results. The experts are the people at places like Harvest House in Ottawa, or the Oak Center in Winnipeg, where they bring people in and get them off of drugs. Let's start quoting them as the experts. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Good morning. Andrew Lawton, True North. I know you're familiar with Alberta's approach to drugs, which similarly to you is very much against so-called safe supply. But they have proposed a forced intervention, and in some cases uh, really using the mechanisms of law to push uh, drug users into treatment under certain conditions. Would you support something like that nationally? I don't know. I need to study it more. I need to understand how it would work. Uh, I, would, I want everybody who's on drugs to be in treatment and re rehab to get off drugs. What I haven't been able to figure out is if someone doesn't want to be rehabilitated, can you require them to be? I don't know. I, I'd like to see some evidence for and against before I make a judgment. Tracy Gray from BC is an MP in our caucus, a common sense conservative, who's proposed that we have treatment in the prisons and that judges have the ability to make it part of a sentence that drug related offenses have drug treatment as part of the of the sentence so that the offender who may, perhaps they were involved in theft we know the theft was linked to their addiction the judge the judge could say while you're in prison you're required to be drug free and we're going to provide you with high quality treatment behind bars that makes sense to me because they're already going to be in prison anyway they might as well be cleaning up their body and their souls and and their addictions um, but I don't know if you can take someone off the street who has not committed an, uh, uh, that has not committed a prison uh, offense and successfully rehabilitate them. If we can, I'm open to it, but I need to see more evidence at this point. Thank you. Next question. Craig Needles from Blackburn Media. You mentioned some of those rehab centers and the, the work that, that's being done there. How would you go about getting more of those open, and in a timely manner as well? Because there are people who are using safe supply right now that if all, that was just cut off all of a sudden, they would be in a very difficult situation. It could be a life and death situation when it comes to withdrawal. So how would you be able to do this quickly? Because OHIP funded rehab is still very difficult to find. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people are, are clearly struggling financially. That's a very good point. It is too hard to find right now. And that's why a lot of people don't get help. They try. You know, they call a 1-800 number, they dig around, family members go scrounging around to try and find out what's available. They're then told that it's $40,000 to put someone in a treatment, um, Sebastian, uh, in a treatment facility. Uh, so I, I appreciate that it's very hard for people to get into these programs. Um, but that's why we need to repurpose the money that's now being sent, uh, spent on unsafe supply and harm production uh, stop giving money to ha academics, bureaucrats, uh, activists, uh, and others who are perpetuating the problem, and fund the treatment facilities so that they can expand. We have treatment facilities. The problem is there are not enough of them. So, you know, if you went to the, the places that have proven track records of getting people off drugs, and you said, if we repurpose some of the money we're already spending, could you expand your service to more people? Uh, that, that, I think, is the best way to do it. 
And as I would do across government, I think we should pay for results. We should pay organizations that actually get results. The result is to get people off drugs. And as we get closer to the election, we will have more details on how we will repurpose those dollars to put them into treatment and recovery to bring our loved ones home drug-free. Thank you. Thank you. This will be the final question. Good morning, uh, Sean Irvin from CTV News. Just along the lines of what you've been talking about already this morning, Mr. Polyev, uh, in regards to drawing kind of a tough line of what your party is proposing. Uh, Scott Cortese is with the London Area Community Health Center, just located over here, during the police announcement, which I know your party is very familiar with, said that you know he wants a little time to come up with better protocols, better options, better, uh, better avenues. Uh, is there any compromise here? You, you, you've drawn quite a line this morning, but is there any compromise opportunity where you could work with some of these folks, come up with a modified plan, or is there strictly one option here in your mind? Are you talking, uh, sorry, on, on what, what subject? Are we talking now drugs or, or crime? I'm talking, I'm talking safe supplies. Uh, well, again, you know, how can you possibly report on the story when you're already using government propaganda? It's not safe. Yes, that's the problem. You're using the term they're using. How can you, so, so you've decided, you've already made up your mind, you're going to report their statements as though they're true. Well, why are you using their language? Uh, uh, yeah, that's the language being used in uh, various news conferences and other policies. Oh, yes, sure. there are, of oh, course. Sure. So you're, you're just being force-fed talking points by the authorities who caused the problem in the first place. Not at all. This is exactly. Yeah. This is exactly. This is exactly the problem. You hear, you this is exactly the problem. It's exactly the problem. How is it working? So I'm, just, I'm just asking you to answer the question of yeah. whether or not there's any room to work with these other agencies or not, and or whether you're going to stick to your your proposals, which are your proposals. That's all I'm asking. Sir. My proposal is recovery and treatment. Am I going to give more money to these agencies? that have caused the crisis? No. They're not going to get any more money. They've caused the mayhem. Have you been around? The, have you seen the tent cities? I lived in this very neighborhood for eight years. Ha have you seen the tent cities? Yes. Yes, I've seen it. Okay, and you think that these agencies are doing a good job? I think there's... Uh, sir, it's my, not my job to debate a federal leader on this issue, sir, but I will say that... I'm asking you a question. Are you think they're doing a good job when you go to see the tent cities that are popping up everywhere in the country? The is doing the best job... The I agree with you on that. The community, but the, the agencies are different than the community. And again, you're repeating their talking points. I mean, there was a time when reporters believed their job was to hold government accountable, not regurgitate their talking points. And that's what you're doing when you say safe supply. It's heroin grade opioids that they're, they want to give out. And it is being diverted to kids. It's not safe. Since this policy was enacted, we have seen overdose rates more than double across Canada. And where these policies have been most enthusiastically embraced, like British Columbia, it's 400%. I don't understand how the media goes to the same agencies and public health bureaucrats who helped cause the crisis and calls them the experts when in fact the results of their policies are plain for all eyes to see there's 256 256 homeless encampments in Toronto now 50 of them have opened up in three months alone uh, like the 25 percent of Canadians are living in poverty we've had 40,000 people die of drug overdoses the approach that we're taking, that the, the NDP Liberals and the bureaucracies that they employ are taking is only making things worse. I will be taking that money and giving it to treatment and recovery services, not more drugs. Frankly, these NDP Liberal bureaucrats and activists who have been sucking up all the money are responsible for the crisis. We saw in BC, the public health authority there, wants to make drugs available in corner stores everywhere they want to have something called compassion clubs where the government would give drugs out for people to, to, to drug distributors who would wander around giving them out freely to anybody who wants them this is why we're in the mess we need a drastic departure from the nightmare that the radical wacko NDP liberal agenda has caused in our streets we need to lock up hardened criminals. We need treatment and recovery. We need to ban hard drugs. We need to bring our loved ones home drug-free. Thank you.